Hello, my name is May. In today's video, I am calling my birthday dress. This was a really fun project to put together. I started with a top sheet that my mother-in-law gave me and borrowed some stamps from a very talented friend. Shout out to Nicole. She hand carved these stamps and let me borrow them for this project. I had a vision for a three-tiered dress with kind of a square neck and because I like to avoid zippers and buttons at all costs, I did a shirred back panel to allow it some give to stretch it over my hips or over my shoulders in order to put it on. I had mapped out my dress and I knew I wanted to hand stamp it just to make the blue fabric a little more exciting and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I call it my birthday dress because I made it for my birthday but unfortunately it was too cold to wear it on that day. But I'm waiting for it to warm up and maybe you take it on a picnic or a coffee date or something fun like that. But that's probably enough said. I'm going to start making it. As I said, I used this top sheet from my mother-in-law, matching thread, elastic thread, my favorite pins, measuring tape, and my trusty blue scissors. And then also for the project, acrylic paint. Got this for 99 cents at Walmart a paintbrush or a roller, a stamp, and then cardboard or some thick paper to stamp on top of so it doesn't leak through to the other side. First off, I am taking my measurements, 40 inches for my bust, and I decide on eight inches long for my bust panel. And then for the length of my dress, 40 inches, which I will later divide into three tiers. My straps, I'm gonna start with 18 inches. I might shorten them later. And then I know I want about 10 inches in between the straps in the front. So I've got all my pieces cut out. I'll show you my measurements here. Voila! And then my three tiers. Again, all equaling up to 40 inches in length. And then these are the back panels to my dress and there are five of them because I need lining and then the shirt piece and then two straps. I'm going to go about shirring this little single panel. So I've got my elastic thread in my machine. I like to sew one line, pick up my foot, manually stitch three down, pivot my fabric, and then sew a parallel line. And I continue to do this along the whole piece of fabric. And then getting my straps ready, again, these are 18 inches long by two and a half. I'm gonna fold them right sides together and pin all the way down. I'm then going to sew a straight line followed by a zigzag stitch just to secure it down both sides. Here I go for my straight stitch, switching it to a zigzag and going over it one more time just to be secure. And then I'm using my threader looper. This is not necessary, but it does make this task of turning a strap inside out much easier. And now I'm gonna go about stamping everything. My awesome friend Nicole also had this little tray and roller that I got to use, which made things a lot easier. For my practice pieces, I was hand painting the paint onto the stamp and that was taking a long time, but it is doable, especially if your stamp is small. and going about stamping the front and back panels for the dresses. And here's how my bust panel looks. I love it. And this is one of the tiers. And then once everything has dried for 24 hours, which I left overnight, I came back and heat set everything. Putting my iron on a medium heat setting and then the good side facing down. 
iron for three to five minutes for each panel. Now to go about assembling it. I've got my lining pieces and my floral pieces is what I'll call them. And I'm going to start attaching what would be the front to the back. And I'm doing this for both my lining and my floral piece. I'll sew down the sides of both of these. To make quick work of it, I'm using my serger. And now I'm going to sandwich in the straps. I'm not gonna lie, this took me a long time to figure out how to do, but I faced the good side of the flowers with the good side of the lining. Sandwich the strap, good side facing the flowers, and measured equally on both sides to make sure I was putting my straps in equally, but heads up, I moved them later. And then I go about pinning along the top of the bodice piece. This is where the straps are going to connect to the front of the dress. So again, the floral side of the strap is gonna face the floral side of this sandwich. And I want 10 inches between my straps, so that gives me about an inch from each side to then place my straps. And then continue to pin all the way across. I always flip everything inside out to make sure that I've done it right. I have sewn too many things incorrectly or backwards or inside out or wrong sides out. You, you get the gist. I gave it a little try on while I was all pinned very gently and decided I wanted my straps moved in a little bit more in the back. They felt like they were just gonna fall off my shoulders. And then I'm gonna sew this line and sew together my lining and my floral pieces. And this will also attach my straps. I'm just snipping off the excess strap because I did make them a little bit shorter, about half an inch for each section, which means just an inch off of each strap. And then I'm doing little slits on all the curved edges of the lining. Next to add my shirt piece. Oh my gosh, I should have created a hem, a rolled hem before I shirt it, but I did it afterwards, a little sloppy, but you live and you learn. I'm going to pin the right side of my shirt panel to the good side of my floral piece on the bodice and then sandwich it in between the good side of the lining. I'm gonna sew just a straight line down and sandwich this little piece in there. Again, turning it inside out just to check. I don't know why this part took me so long to figure out. It was just like a mental puzzle. Sew a straight line down. And there it is, all nice and stretchy. And then to attach it to the other side is actually quite simple. I'm going to take the right side of the shirt piece and I'm going to pin it in place just so it doesn't move around to the good side of the floral and again sandwich the lining in between and pin it down again. Checking to see if it will work. And sewing it together. Here's my second try on, realizing that adding some bust darts would 
really help add a good shape to the top panel. So I am just folding in half the side seam and where the top strap is and I'm gonna just put a little dart in there. Just about a two inch long dart going in about a quarter of an inch. Honestly, I'm not a pro at darts, but I got away with this somehow. Essentially just start at one end of the fabric and then sew off the edge and you got a dart. And I'm super happy with how it's shaping up. It's starting to look exactly how I imagined. And then here are my three tiers. I'm going to take the shortest one and start prepping it. Starting with right sides together, I'm going to pin and sew along this first tier. That is all connected. Now I'm going to sew a big wide stitch all the way around the top. And this will give me my first ruffle for my first tier. I'm gonna pull on the string, which causes the fabric to fold and ruffle as you move it along the thread. So the thread's gonna get longer, the fabric essentially is gonna get shorter and shorter. until it's the length of the top piece of my bodice. And then I will flip it right sides together up onto the top, find the side seam of course, pin that first. And then pin all the way around the remaining of the first tier. And first tier is done, time for a second tier. You connect the right sides together. Do a big wide stitch. Ruffle it in until it's the size of the previous tier. It's honestly kind of soothing to ruffle the fabric. Always matching those side seams, baby. And then sewing on the second tier. Lastly, the third tier. I hacked this one and used the bottom of the top sheet, which was already hemmed, so I didn't have to do that. A few things I did at the end were make the darts a little bit bigger, so probably about half an inch dart. And the dress was feeling really big and balloony, so I added a strip of elastic to the waistband. And I just sewed it directly on to the seam that was already there. It's not a super great job, but it really brought in the dress and give it a way better and more flattering shape. So I'm really happy with the outcome. And that is my birthday dress that I will hopefully get to wear soon as the weather warms up here in Idaho. Thanks for helping my little, my vegetables are done. And with that, my birthday dress is done. Thanks so much for supporting my tiny channel. It's slowly growing. And if you want to help me grow, click the like button, a little thumbs up right down there. Subscribe if you haven't, comment if you want, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.